PSA is the best grading company, and I'm about to tell you why. Grading has become a huge phenomenon in the collectibles market. Trading cards from sports to TCGs and even video game grading has seen a crazy rise in popularity. When it comes to TCGs, there are a few options when it comes to grading. PSA, BGS, and CGC are the biggest names in the grading world. I'm going to tell you why PSA is the best choice for anyone who wants to grade their cards. What's up guys, we're back with another epic video. Today we're talking about graded cards. It's a very popular topic in TCGs. People have very strong opinions. They love PSA, they hate PSA, they love BGS, they hate BGS. As we know, we've had our struggles with PSA on this channel. We've had good luck, we've had bad luck, but there's also other options. So PSA is the most popular when it comes to trading cards. By most popular, I mean the most people use PSA compared to everything else. Like BGS is second, CGC is probably third, and then there's a numerous amount of smaller grading companies opening up recently. However, just because PSA is the largest in the market does not mean that they're universally accepted as the best. We know this. If I ever post a PSA video, you check the comments. There's a ton of people saying, I hate PSA. It's awful. They're inconsistent. They do things wrong for multiple reasons. Some of it is deserved. Some of it is not. Some people live and die by BGS. They love CGC. They think that they're the best for whatever reason. CGC is strict, so it's better. BGS has subgrades, so it's better. Some of the reasons that they like these better are actually good reasons, and some are just false beliefs. I'm going to give you guys my reason that I like PSA much better than BGS and much better than CGC, and we're going to start off with the slabs. The main comparison I want to make between slabs is between PSA and BGS. The others um, I don't really use as much because one, CGC doesn't do Yu-Gi-Oh! And the others I'm basically saying you should not use in general. So basically the big two. We have Jinzo and Jinzo. We got two different slabs here. We got a Gem Mint 10 PSA. Let's check this slab out. I really like how the PSA slabs look. It, they just really fit the card well. They have had a point where they were too big, but for the most part, they fit perfectly. And they, you know the card's in there. It displays really nicely. You can see the foiling really well. The labels are not great. We know that, but um, I think, I don't know. I like them for some reason. They just feel like they've always been like that. So it just kind of fits for me. And of course, what people really hate about the slabs is there's often, you know, look at this. Like, what is that? I mean, there's just a big old scratch. There's scrapes, there's scuffs. There's all kinds of stuff. Like, I just graded this. There's already a scratch on it. You know, stuff like that. The slabs come a little beat up sometimes, which is definitely a minus. I'm not a big fan of that they do that. But I do love the slabs in general, especially when they're not damaged or like messed up. Then BGS. See, look at this. I mean, this is, I just don't love them. I know people like Rhyme Style loves these. He's, he's always like, you're crazy. They're way better in PSA. But I personally, I mean, just look at this. It's just such a big slab. Like the card is just kind of in no man's land there. You know, there's all kinds of extra room here. The nice thing about how thick the slabs are, is you feel like your card is in a brick. Like there's no way it's getting damaged. You're like it's twice as wide as the PSA slab. So it is definitely protected in there. But I just don't really love how like huge it is. And it's really like pointy on the edges. PSA has the rounded edges, so I like that a little better. Another thing to note is BGS also gets stuff in the slabs. I've got an example right here, the Jinzo. So check this out. Hair right in the slab, which is just kind of nasty. So I'm not a big fan of that. It's not like the stuff like on the card. I mean, it would probably come off if I just regraded it or recased it, but like just the fact that that's in there is very annoying. So BGS is a culprit for doing that as well. Probably not as much as PSA, but they, they do come with broken slabs and you know stuff in the, in the case occasionally. Then we're just gonna take a quick look at the CGC slab just because I do have one sent by a viewer. So thanks again for doing that. I really love these slabs. I'm a huge fan of them. I still don't grade Yu-Gi-Oh! But maybe when they do, I will get some because I really like these clear ones. Circular edges, which is I'm a big fan of. I think they look really clean. So I'm not a huge fan of the label, but it's kind of growing on me to be honest. So I do like these. And then I just have this for a quick look. I mean, just looks like complete garbage. Some of these new ones uh, look better than this. I mean, this is like one of the worst I've seen. It's like a meme, world-class grading, not so world-class. Yeah, there's another example. Also, PSA brings the best value to the table. It's not disputable. If you compare the prices, they're much higher. However, if you're comparing to BGS and you use a PSA 10, if you compare it to a BGS 10, BGS 10 is actually going to be more, but the actual chances of grading a BGS 10 is extremely low. Unless you're submitting like brand new cards, if you're doing vintage cards, you're going to have to submit probably 100 cards to get a BGS 10, maybe even more. Whereas with a PSA 10, you're going to get 
We've had some bad luck recently, but I got 13 out of 23 the other day. So like you can even get half and half. Usually you'll probably get like one out of five, one out of 10 or something as if it's a 10. It varies from card to card, but the chances are much, much higher to get a PSA 10 over a BGS 10. So that's why you can't really compare those two prices because if you do, BGS is gonna win out by a decent amount, but the actual percentage chance of grading it is so low that it's not actually comparable. That is why you kind of have to compare PSA 10s to BGS 9.5. So for BGS, if I was to get three 9.5s and a nine here, that would be an overall 9.5. Then it goes all the way up to two 10 subgrades and two 9.5s is also a 9.5. So anywhere in that range is a 9.5. This is what people compare to PSA 10s. But when you actually compare those, PSA 10s are worth way more. I'm gonna use Dark Magician from Ghost from the Past, PSA 10 versus Dark Magician Ghost from the Past, 9.5, the Ghost Rares. I'm gonna pop prices up for both of them, and you can see that the Dark Magician PSA 10 goes for significantly more than the 9.5. This is a huge plus for PSA. If you wanna grade and you get yourself a 10, the value is nearly double a 9.5 most of the time. And then if you were to get a nine, the price isn't that far off of a 9.5. So your risk is you don't get the 10 and you get a nine, but you really don't lose that much compared to if you sent it to BGS and got a 9.5. The plus side for BGS is you do have that chance at the BGS 10 and the black label, which is when you get all 10 subgrades. And if you actually hit that black label, which is probably one in a thousand cards for the old school, maybe even more, you hit it big because those cards are worth 10 times a PSA 10 sometimes. Like they're insane, they're way higher. Maybe not 10 times, but they're way, way more. So if you do actually get that lucky, that's kind of the good side of BGS. CGC, I can't speak to the prices for Yu-Gi-Oh yet because they don't grade them, but I do know that the prices are lower than PSA. I'm not sure where they are compared to BGS, but they're pro I'm guessing they're a little lower because they are newer. And finally, let's get into every other grading company, even the newest ones. If you don't have a big name, like one of the top three, especially PSA, BGS, like top two, the value on the card is like way lower, which is why it's not really worth it to use those grading companies. If you want your card slabbed just for collection, then maybe go for it. But most people are not grading their cards just for their collection. They want there to be some value there while they collect. Also, we need to talk about the cost of submission. So PSA recently closed and opened back up and raised their prices once again. They're up to $300 Super Express, $200 Express, and we have yet to see what their regular service will be because it's not back yet which a lot of people say, that's insanely expensive. We should use something else. Let's try BGS. Let's check out BGS prices and see how they compare. BGS has also closed all but their top level service levels, which is the $250 level, I believe. So that is comparable to your Super Express. $300 versus $250. So they are a little bit cheaper, but they're still really expensive. They have $125 option at that, but there's no subgrades. And that's one of the main draws of BGS. So if you don't use the subgrades, it's kind of pointless and it does hurt the value a little bit. BGS cards with subgrades do better than BGS cards without subgrades in the same grade. Then if you look at the lower levels, the, the tier below has not been reopened, so it could get a raised price. We're not sure yet. It's at $150. So you compare that to the $200, it's $50 less again. Then the tier below that is $50. That's what PSA was before they closed. So that's comparable. And then finally, they have a $35 um, whatever they call it, it's like economy or whatever. Compare that to PSA's bulk. It's actually more. I think PSA is probably going to raise it, but it's $35 a piece. So they're actually not that much cheaper. So the actual cheaper part doesn't really help because then you grade them and the value is less. So you spend nearly the same amount to get less value. Now that we've gone through some of the prices, I want to mention something that a lot of people mention in all my comments. Every time I do a PSA submission and they think something's inconsistent. Like in my last submission, we had some off-center cards get 10s. We had, um, in the previous sub, we got eights and then this time we got 10s or whatever. They think this is inconsistent. PSA is inconsistent. That's their conclusion from the couple of videos they saw. BGS must be way more consistent. I've seen a video where they were consistent. You guys have to take into account sample size. First of all, there's tons and tons of submissions there's always gonna be a little bit of inconsistency. If you get the right two subs next to each other, they're gonna seem super inconsistent, but overall, they're fairly consistent. BGS is the same way. They're not super consistent either. If you go check out my friend Vintage Yu-Gi-Oh's video, I'm gonna link it up in the eye. Go check it out. He compared the same cards. So he graded a bunch of cards and he thought the grades were terrible. He thought they were way too low. So he cracked all of them and resubbed them. Nearly every subgrade changed. Not every grade, every subgrade. So there's four different subgrades per card. 
they were changing like three and four per card. Like they would go from a nine to a 9.5, a nine to an eight, an eight to a 9.5, a 10 to an 8.5. Like it was insane, like very inconsistent. It just shows that every grading company is gonna be a little bit inconsistent. I want you guys to go check that out before you leave any comments about how consistent BGS is. It's really interesting. It was a really cool video. So I want you guys to go check that out. This whole video is my opinion of why I use PSA. I like their slabs better. That is 100% opinion. A lot of people don't like their slabs better, so it doesn't really matter to them. They have, to, You have to make your own choice on that one. Then, the factual part of why I use PSA, the value is higher and you have a better chance at getting the top grade. So, black labels and tens for BGS are hardly ever graded, which is just not that fun to, cr to collect 9.5s in my opinion. I like collecting the top grade. And that value part of PSA is just a huge draw. When you grade something, you spend a lot of money to grade it, you're collecting something, it's really cool when it has value, when you can actually sell something if you need to, and you can make a little bit of money. And that's why PSA is just a no-brainer for me. The value that we've talked about, plus the fact that I like the aesthetics more, we've already shown the cases. I just like those cases more than BGS. So the fact that I can have more value in the cards that I'm collecting for basically the same cost for a, a better looking case, in my opinion, it just, it's a no-brainer. I, I feel like I am personally, it's a no-brainer for PSA. I know other people are huge BGS case fans. In that case, it would be a little bit different because like you're getting worse value, but you like how it looks better. You think they protect the card better. You know, you think they're a better company, whatever. I personally think PSA is just the best. That's just my opinion. So that wraps up why I prefer PSA over any other grading company. BGS being second. I don't really like them for the most part. Leave your comments in the comment section. Let me know what you think why you don't like PSA, why you do, why you like BGS, why you don't. CGC, do you want to see them grading Yu-Gi-Oh soon? I would like to do it. I would like to submit to them. And uh, let me know any underdogs you think that I should have mentioned, you know, some new grading company that's pretty good. I am personally very skeptical about new grading companies, but let me know if there's some that I should check out. Maybe we can send some cards to them for fun. I think it'd be a lot of fun. So thank you guys for watching this video. It was a good time. I'm sure there'll be a lot of strong opinions in the comments. It'll be a good time to go check out the comment section. Maybe get into a little back and forth about PSA, BGS. Nah, nah, nah. Okay. That's for this video. I'll see you guys later. Peace. Shining Abyss. Ooh, the Revival Jam. Oh, and oh!